About 40,000 pre-dynastic bowls, plates, vases were found under Saqqara, supposedly made with copper tools. However, a mainstream debunker made a recreation of a stone bowl made of brachia marble, not granite or porphyry, with a makeshift lathe and grinding stones. It took her uh, six months to do, about eight hours a day, and it didn't really match the copy. Where the items were found were underground and no sign of candle burns on the ceiling. I'm not math genius, but that's about two bowls a year. Little Mohammed working in the dark. You need to get a shift on. Get some Red Bull down here. You. You're 39,998 off the pace. Old Khufu in his Great Pyramid has got nothing to eat his Cocoa Pops in. It's gonna die in there. And you haven't even started on the spoons. In all seriousness, this is the actual mainstream view. If it takes a debunker six months to make one item, and that is a marble bowl, not even granite or porphyry, um, six months, do the math. How many people need it, and how long to make 40,000 of them? The hardness of stone is measured by Mohs hardness as a unit of calculation. Mohs hardness in the 6 to 7 are hard stone, such as quartzite and granite. Mohs hardness between 3 and 5 belong to the medium hard stone, such as marble. Mohs hardness in 1 to 2 are soft stone, such as limestone and dolomite. This is an online page from a construction firm. I'll read just a couple of lines to emphasize the point. Granite is found to be the most beautiful natural stone. The main reason behind the strength is the ability of the countertop to withstand any damage or climatic extremities. Generally, a hard stone is able to scratch other materials and can also get scratches from other stones, depending on the hardness. Granite is one of the harder types of stone that it gives scratches to other stones without getting damaged. The granite Mohs scale ranking of 6 reflects the capability of not getting scratched with a knife either. A science article explaining how granite, porphyry, diorite, andesite and rhyolite are formed within the Earth's crust. Talks about the Mohs scale of hardness between 6 and 7. Obviously, in order to cut and carve these types of rock, you need a material higher up the Mohs scale, e.g. corundum or diamond, not copper, which has a Mohs hardness scale of 3, which the ancient Egyptians were supposed to have used for tools along with pounding stones, and later bronze. Hardness scale again of 3, and iron, with a hardness scale of four and a half.
So let's have a look what Google says. How did Egyptians carve rocks? Carving on softer stones was done using copper chisels and stone tools. Hard stones required tools of yet harder stone. Copper alloys and the use of abrasive sand to shape them. Polishing was achieved with a smooth rubbing stone and abrasive sands with a fine grit. And copper alloy is bronze. An alloy of copper is bronze. The constituent elements of bronze are copper and tin. The composition of bronze is 90% copper and 10% tin. Which bronze we know on the hardness scale is a 3. Petrie's book, chapter 19, quote, Many nations, both savage and civilised, are in the habit of cutting hard materials by means of a soft substance, copper with horn, etc., with a hard powder supplied to it. The powder sticks in the bases employed, and this being scraped over the stone to be cut, so wears it away. It is therefore very readily assumed by many persons, as I myself did at first, that this method must be necessarily have been used by the Egyptians and that it would suffice to produce all the examples now collected. Such however is far from being the case, though no doubt in alabaster and other soft stones this method was used. That the Egyptians were acquainted with a cutting jewel far harder than quartz and that they used this jewel as a sharp pointed graver is put beyond doubt by the diorite bowls with inscriptions of the 4th dynasty, of which I found fragments of Giza. The forms of tool were straight saws, circular saws, tubular drills and lathes. The straight saws varied from 0.3 to 0.2 inch thick, according to the work. The largest were 8 feet or more in length. As the cuts run, lengthways on the Great Pyramid Coffer, which is 7 feet 6 inches long. The examples of saw cuts figured in plate 14 are as follows. Number 1. From the end of the Great Pyramid Coffer of granite, showing where the saw cut was run too deep in the stuff twice over and backed out again. Number 2. A piece of cyanite picked up at Memphis, showing cuts on four faces of it, and the breadth of the saw by a cut across the top of it. This probably was a waste piece from cutting out a statue in the rough. These examples here are known as overcuts, where the type of cutting device has gone into as an error and been pulled back out. So here we have another solid granite box. Notice the straight edges on the corners where it's been cut and we have a, another overcut in the corner which goes all the way down to the floor you can see the depth of this that's been done um, also notice the scratchy hieroglyphs this is possibly this granite box has been possibly inherited another overcut to the left of that with modern repair work which is underneath you can see the depth there and the modern repair work another wonderfully carved granite box also probably from an earlier epoch um, due to the scratchy hieroglyphs that's been incised on it um, you can see on the right hand side on the top here again there is the overcut where the saw or the cutting device has gone gone in and come out again as a mistake, as an error. Two more, closer up. You can't get away from this stuff once you see it. This one is incredibly precise with its angles and geometry. 
Also, the hieroglyphics are nicely done. If you know the work of the late John Anthony West, he said the Egyptian writing came in fully evolved right at the start. Now things get interesting and should make a bit more sense with the dating issues with some artefacts. This is made of limestone, obviously Moe's hardness of three, dated from the Old Kingdom, which was when the pyramids were supposedly built. And another statue of limestone, also from the Old Kingdom of an official. Just keep in mind the fairly primitive way that these are carved. The pyramids and other structures are made with pure precision. So maybe these guys are not that important. We next have a red granite box. I say box always due to the fact that the same rectangular style of boxes found in the Giza pyramids were not sarcophagi since no mummies were found in them. Others like the red and the bent pyramids contain no boxes. This is a geometrically perfect Mohs hardness of between 6 and 7, meaning no copper tools used and as Petrie says, this could only be cut with a diamond blade or maybe a different type of cutting device. This is also dated to the same time period as the two previous statues made of a softer type of rock, limestone which is a hardness of three, which can be cut with copper tools. We next have a black granite bowl, dated supposedly to the third intermediate period, which is around 1000 BCE. This bowl is perfectly circular with precise rim that has no deviations at all. Also note the cut and the machine like style with the centre rim again exactly circular. I personally due to the imprecise head of Hathor looking like it's been hammered in would say this is an heirloom that the Egyptians found and decided to use in their temple a religious purpose, hence adding the Hathor head on both sides. Now this is the issue. On the steles from the early Egyptians they show this way of producing a vase. This is correct with clay or even soft stone such as a limestone Mohs hardness scale of three. Except what we find are a mixture of clay pots, some limestone of a below average standard, in the same strata as the machined cut type of granite and porphyry vessels. This is an anathema since these finds are pretty much pre-dynastic, meaning before the Egyptian civilization began.
as you can see on the left, official plaque showing how the porphyry vase was made. Now behind this glass case, within this glass case I should say, this is the last. These vessels are all from the same pre-dynastic finds, including the coffin and skeleton, the machined grey wake bowl, probably machined alabaster, which is of a soft stone, and also behind the coffin are the below average clay pots and vases, all the same finds. These machine type vessels are obviously heirlooms from a more advanced race. The same race who probably built the pyramids and other incredible megalithic sites made with precision. <laughs>